In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to draw plants with pens and markers. Here are two examples I will work through in this tutorial. We will practice drawing individual leaves first, then draw a pot of flowers together. Later, we will practice drawing a small flower garden scene. I listed all my art supplies and the timestamp in the description box. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Let's briefly talk about the style first before we start to draw. If you have watched my other tutorials, you probably already noticed most of my drawings are more towards loose sketch style, which is what we'll be focusing on in this tutorial. In my previous drawings, you will notice lots of them have loose or even random lines. They look random, but I did them on purpose. The idea is focusing on the big picture instead of paying too much attention to too many details. You should be very relaxing and allowing yourself to make mistakes when doing loose sketches. Here is an example of non-loose sketch I did in the class tutorial. There are no random lines. Most of the lines are very precise. So just keep in mind in this tutorial, we will be doing more like a loose sketch. Just relax and enjoy the process. First, let's practice drawing leaves from different angles. When you look at the leaf from different angles, the width and the length of the leaf will appear differently. The purpose of this exercise is to help us get used to drawing leaves from different views. Here we are looking at the leaf from the side. The width of the leaf appears narrower. Sometimes we can see the back of the leaf from the side, when the leaf is folded a little. From this view, the length of the leaf appears shorter. It's almost like you are drawing a shape of a heart. Keep in mind, the same rules apply to the flower petal as well. As I mentioned before, we will be doing loose sketches in this tutorial. You don't need to draw precise shapes of leaves. Just relax, loosen up, and let go of details. On your sketchbook, you can simply sketch the outer shape of the leaves to practice. No need to draw the veins. Once you get comfortable with drawing leaves from different angles, feel free to move to the next practice. After you practice drawing leaves from different angles, try to draw a branch or flower. For the flower petals, here I use gardenia as an example. As you can see, the shape of its petals is irregular. When you are drawing petals in this exercise, don't worry about making any mistakes. Same with the leaf. When you observe the flower from different angles, the length and the width of the petal appear differently. Avoid drawing the same size and the same angle of leaves repetitively, otherwise your drawing will look flat. You can find pictures of your favorite flower to observe more details. Then you can practice drawing individual petals like we did for the leaf. When you are ready, let's draw a pot of flowers together. First, I'm drawing an oval to simplify the form of the plant and decide its size. Then I draw squiggly lines to further define its outer shape. Here we can draw a pot under the plant. If you want to check if your shape is symmetrical or not, 
you can turn your paper upside down to look at your drawing. Now I'm drawing some circles to locate where I want to draw flowers. Try not to evenly spread flowers if you want your drawing look more natural. I'm using a pencil to outline everything first. Later I will use a pen to add the ink line. Remember the shop tutorial we did before. We need to decide the light source. Here the light source is from the upper left. Then we will draw more leaves on the lower right part of the plants to build up the darker value. I did three basic views of flowers here as a reference for you. We can simplify the form of a flower as a hemisphere. Notice how the length and the width of the circle plan changes as the angle change. The first example is when we look at the flower from the side, and the flower is not fully blooming yet. The second example is when we look at a fully blooming flower on the side. Notice we will draw many short lengths of petals around the center of the flower. The third example is the easiest to draw because all petals don't have length change. I basically combine these three examples throughout this tutorial. When you are going over your sketch with a pen, you don't need to precisely follow all your pencil outline. And you don't need to draw very fast like I did here. Follow your own pace and focus on the flow of your incline. I'm basically drawing different sizes and angles of leaves around each flower. On the edge of the plants, you can draw some baby sized leaves. I took some pictures of the gardenia plants when I went to the local store. We can use them as a reference here. But I won't draw everything I see. Instead, I will simplify all the details. I won't speed up this video too much so you can see the full process of how I finished this drawing. The video will be long, but I think it will be helpful for anyone that I actually want to follow along with this video to draw.
Since the light source is from the upper left, we can do some hatching on the right side to add the darker value. This step is optional. Now it's the coloring time. We can simplify the plants and the pot as two spheres. Each of them has their own light to dark value. I'm using a light cream color to add a warm tone in the light value area. If you have a brush tip marker, feel free to use it. You will need at least three shades of green colors for the leaves. Start with the lightest shade to color the entire plants. Leave a few spots in the light area as a part of the highlight. Use a second shade to add the mid-tone. You will mainly add colors on the gaps between your leaves. You can color some leaves in the lower right part of the plants with this color, but not all of them. To color the flower pot, I'm mainly using the gradient stroke. Start from the edge and quickly move towards the center of the flower pot while lifting your marker a little at the end. Then your marker stroke will have a gradient. Feel free to turn the paper to the angle that allows you to draw easily. I actually didn't like this clay color. I think this color is too strong. The focal point of this drawing is the flower, not this pot. I recommend you use a light blue marker to color this part. Use the third shade of the green to add the core shadow. I'm only adding this color on the negative space between leaves and flowers, and a little bit on the leaves that are under the flower as part of the shadow. Here you can use a purple color for the reflected light area. The cast shadow of the leaves will fall on the pot, so make sure you darken the edge area. For the core shadow area, I just did some very loose strokes to add a darker value. You can use a fourth shade of green to add a more darker value, but don't add too much, only a few dots around the flowers.
Now you can use the gel pen to add the highlight. You can also use it to fix your mistakes. Use a dark gray marker to color the cast shadow on the ground. To add the depth to the shadow, use a second gray color to darken the shadow area that are close to the bottom of the pot. To further build up the depths, you can use a brush pen or a black marker to add the darkest value. Then we will use a pen to further define some outlines. Lastly, you can do some hatching to add some transitions between the light and the dark value. This is pretty much the final look of this drawing. For the next exercise, we will use the same technique to draw a garden scene. For this drawing, I decided to use a triangular composition. This composition is easy to build a balance for your drawing. The focal point of this drawing will be the planter. Draw a center vertical line first, then draw some horizontal lines on where the opening, the neck, and the bottom of the planter will be. You can sketch some short straight lines first to outline the planter instead of drawing curved lines right away. Sketch some circles on where you want to draw your plants. To add a narrative to this drawing, I decided to draw a broken edge for this planter. You will see I actually changed my planter designs many times throughout the pencil sketch. Now I'm going over all circles with squiggly lines to make each form more organic. I tried to put decorations on the planter at the beginning, but later I changed it to a simple design because I don't want this drawing look too busy since I will have lots of flowers around.
In this drawing, I will mainly use 0.2 millimeter pen for the outline. Here I'm drawing some pointy and leaf-shaped marks to outline these plants. The light source is from the upper left. You can draw fewer and less dense marks around the upper left area, since this part will be brighter than others. For the relief part, I forgot to switch to a finer pen. The outline here is too thick. I should have used 0.05 mm. Remember, the line weight can also build up depth to your drawing. There are other easy ways to draw small plants. One of the ways is only drawing the outer shape of the flower instead of drawing the petals one by one. But I think it's kind of relaxing when drawing the leaves and the flowers one by one, and the result is satisfying. If you feel like some of your leaves or flowers don't look good, don't worry about it. We are focusing on the big picture instead of the little details.
I'm only drawing squiggly lines for the plants in the background. We draw fewer details on scenes in the background to add the depth in our drawing. Here I decide to draw some roses. Think about your writing different size of letter C. I'm just drawing some small curved lines over and over. The focal point area already has lots of flowers and details. To create a balance in this drawing, I'm gonna draw some plants that have less details here. To draw the grass plants, we can practice drawing single blades first. Here I did a step-by-step -step example. The number 2 is the easiest. Just two curved lines meet on a point at the top. Normally, I draw from the left to the right. So I will draw number 1 first, then draw number 2 around, then draw number 3. Between the gaps, you can draw number 4, which is the back view. You don't have to follow this sequence, but just make sure you combine these four examples so your grass will look more dynamic. If you want to learn how to draw rocks with pen and markers, you can check my other tutorials. For the holster plans, you can think of it as drawing some elongated heart shapes. Remember, the length and the width of the leaves appears differently from different angles. In this drawing, the top layer of the leaves will look shorter than the bottom layers.
I'm gonna erase the pencil outline, then start to color. For this drawing, there are not much marker strokes technique involved. If I'm drawing trees and rocks, I will intentionally create some white marker strokes while adding values. But for small plants with dense outlines, there is not much space for me to draw large strokes. Therefore, I will draw some small dots and marks to create a texture while adding value. To color the planter, I move the marker fast to create gradient strokes. The technique is kind of like when we were drawing rocks. But here you need to draw curved strokes that are following the shape of the planter. When you are using a darker green in the light area, you can draw some marks to make it look like leaves.
We can use less saturated colors on scenes in the background to create a sense of space. I'm adding more marks on the core shadow area to build up more volume for these plants. I'm increasing the line weight for the outlines on the right side, which is the shadow side, to create a sense of three-dimensionality. This plant will cast a shadow on this area, so add some darker values here. I used the gel pen to add some highlights on the planter. I made a mistake by adding too much darker values on the planter. Later I will use a chalk pastel to fix it. I actually don't quite like this tangerine color. I wish I had a more saturated orange color to use on here. You can draw some small dots around to create a stone texture. I forgot to hit the record button when I was coloring the roses, but it's the same steps with the first practice we just did. I just used different sets of colors. The light source is from the upper left. We will only add more darker values on the lower right part here. 
You can use any type of marker strokes you like here. The grass casts a shadow on the rocks, so make sure you draw a shadow here. It's a small detail but will make a big difference. For the hoster plants, add more darker values on the center of the leaves. Also, you will need to draw some shadows.
Here I'm drawing some lavenders. Since the lavender is in the background, I won't draw too many details here. I'm simply using two shades of purple and two shades of green to draw some dots to create a basic form. For subjects in the foreground, I always use at least three shades of markers to build enough depth, but anything in the background, one or two shades will be enough. I should have not added too much darker values on the planter. To make the core shadow area brighter, I used the chalk pastel here. You can use a white pencil as well. After I smudged the chalk pastel around, some ink line faded, so I'm adding the outline back. This area is a little bit empty, so I'm going to draw more leaves here. I did not like the butterfly on the right side, so I used acrylic paint to cover it. Thank you. 
I actually added too much dark value on this plant, so it looks a little bit flat. I used too many pastel colors. The whole drawing looks a little bit dull. So here I used the yellow green color to increase the saturation. Here you can use a white gel pen to draw some marks to add a texture to these plants. I'm just adding some small details lastly. This is pretty much the final look of this drawing. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial and have learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I will see you in the next tutorial.